it is officially summer and I wanted to make a video about what to do during the summer if you're an undergraduate student and you're looking to apply to medical school. So number one is research. You can either apply to an established research position and I'm going to list a website with all the available research positions in the United States so you guys can look through those lists and see what you're interested in or you can email a professor at your college um, that you would like to work with. Um, there are some pros and cons with each. Um, you're more likely to find a paid position if you apply to a, um, an established program. But the good thing about emailing someone at your school is you're more likely to be able to continue that work during your school year. Um, and working at a lab longer means more possibility of publishing. Number two is volunteering. And there are a bunch of places that you can do this at. Um, I would look at hospitals, hospice, nursing homes, and rehab. Um, it really doesn't matter which one of these that you apply to, um, as long as you can get um, a little bit of patient contact and you don't have to do anything really clinical, as long as you can spend some time with the patient and talk to them and kind of observe what the uh, medical interaction is between the patient and the doctors. And you can, um, this will definitely come in handy when you go to your interviews, um, because a lot of interviews will ask you for um, your anecdotes and your stories, and you can get a lot of stories out of these interactions um, from volunteering. Number three is working at a doctor's office. You can kind of do this by emailing a doctor to see if you can shadow the doctor for free. Um, obviously, um, they won't be paying you to shadow them. Uh, or you can um, apply for a position at their office. So for example, I worked as a receptionist at a um, allergy doctor, um, ENT doctor. So I kind of went about it like um, I would with any other job. I applied through Craigslist, I interviewed and I got the job and I worked as a receptionist for um, a whole summer and a little bit during the school year also. Um, and that really gave me a good um, perspective of that perspective that you don't really see as a medical student or a doctor, which is when a patient first comes into a doctor's office, you know, receptionist is the person who um, greets the patient, takes care of the insurance, and maybe do a little bit of billing also. So um, having that perspective is really helpful. Um, if you can't get a job, like working job, a paid position, then um, just shadowing is fine also. Number four is EMT. And this is if you have a couple of years before applying to medical school, so you do have an opportunity to work as an EMT. It's not enough to just get your EMT degree or EMT license, EMT certification. Um, you have to actually put that to use. So a lot of um, large universities will have their own EMT units. So um, if you're planning on getting your EMT certification, then definitely check with your school to see if they can sponsor any of your training so that you don't have to pay the whole cost of EMT training session. But it, in exchange, you'll be working for the school EMT during the school year. Number five is reading. People ask me this all the time, like, what can I do before I actually start studying for MCAT? Um, how can I improve my MCAT score? And I find that during MCAT studying, the hardest thing to improve is your verbal score. And that, you can't just, you can't just improve by studying for a couple of months. That really takes a long time. And I think in order to do better in your verbal section, you need to be reading um, and you need to be reading the right thing. So I'll list some resources of things that I think that you should be reading um, before, maybe even years before you start preparing for your MCAT so that you can do well in your verbal section. Finally, number six is if you already have your medical school acceptance, Please don't do any kind of studying. Um, please don't do any kind of like pre-learning. Do something fun, travel, or read for pleasure. Um, check to see if your school has a summer reading list. Um, obviously, there, those books are designed to um, help you get a perspective of what it's like to be a medical student or a doctor. So if you really want to do something medical related, then read those books. But otherwise, do something fun. You're going to be studying for a really long time probably for the rest of your life once you start medical school. So you're not going to have just like two or three months free with no obligations. So um, definitely do something fun, figure out your living situation um, for med school. Um, like I said, take a vacation, travel somewhere. Um, but you 
you know, done the hard work and now you should enjoy your time. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, definitely let me know if you have any other tips for other viewers. Um, if you think that they should be doing during the summer before, before applying to medical school. Um, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.